नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सिक्स्थ ट्यूटोरियल एंड टुडे आई विल शो हाउ वी जेनरेट द इनपुट स्ट्रक्चर फाइल फॉर क्वांटम एक्सप्रेसो एंड देन वी विल कैरी आउट द ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑफ एग्जांपल बाय लेयर ग्राफी एज यू नो वी हैव टू प्रिपेयर एन डॉट इन फाइल एज द इनपुट फाइल एंड इन द डॉट इन फाइल you will uh, see that there exist uh, this atomic positions and uh, different coordinates and uh, uh, then there are the lattice type bravais lattice type and um, cell dimensions so how how do we exactly uh, get this all these uh, things these parameters because to write down a structure uh, by your own is not so easy and uh, it gets even difficult if you have a even larger uh, structure with uh, a lot of atoms so uh, for that uh, there are tools available within the espresso package and uh, most of the standard uh, crystals standard materials uh, also 2d materials uh, you will get the dot cif file the crystallographic input format so the cif file yeah, looks like this Uh, so you will get the cif files uh, on the web um, so you can download the cif file from the internet and uh, here i have uh, one such file for uh, bilayer graphene and uh, i have already downloaded it on my desktop and how it looks like um, we can just open the structure and see uh, this is avogadro again and with that we can uh, open the cif files and look at the structures so this is a, a hexagonal cell and we have this carbon atoms in this unit cell so this is the bilayer uh, uh, graphene configuration and uh, this cif file uh, you can see in avogadro it shows the different cartesian coordinates uh the cell parameters uh, cell vectors and the angles in between them uh, all these things but uh, even then to write down uh, the input file in the format uh, specified for quantum espresso all the getting all the cartesian coordinates correct is a bit difficult so for that uh, we use uh, certain tools and these tools are available within the espresso package as i said uh in this uh, directory uh say this is my installation directory of the espresso tools so uh, i see this uh within that there is a subfolder pw and then another subfolder named tools and within that there are a number of uh, executables uh, available this uh files like castep to qe so it converts the uh, castep input to a quantum espresso input uh, cif to qe is the one we will be using uh, then also there are pwi pwi stands for the pw.x input pwi dot uh, uh, pwi2 xsf uh, that will uh, convert the input file format if you have a dot in file to xsf and what is most important for uh, this um, Uh, this tutorial is the cif to qe so this will basically take your cif file uh, that you can uh, download from the internet and that will turn it into a quantum espresso input file so it will write down the atomic coordinates in the necessary file format so that's what it's going to do and uh, let's uh, just uh, take a look at this so this is my file i have uh, for convenience put it in this folder uh, this by layer and in this i will open a terminal uh, so my executable this um, just as i showed you that is available in the tools under the pw directory within the espresso installation but uh, i have added uh, this 
this uh, location of this folder to my path in the bash so I can directly uh, write the command I can get cif to qe dot sh then I will put this flag i dash i this will uh, ensure that I have uh, the correct uh, Brava is lattice in the using the iBrav uh, format it uh, writes down the output otherwise it, uh, if you do not use that flag it will write it down to a simple uh, unit cell so it will not have any uh, specified hexagonal or uh, square or any kind of special lattice it will not read the lattice from the CIF input and uh, accordingly uh, format your output so uh, important to have this uh, flag then uh, then it is important to give the file name so this is my file name and I will save it somewhere right so so I will just give the output file name uh, dot in file so by layer dot in and it has written down a by layer dot in Uh, input file and uh, as you can see that it has a lot of uh, flags already uh, in that so it generates uh, a number of uh, flags that you may or may not need for your calculation just to convert uh, the CIF uh, to the dot in file format and it also gives you uh, an example uh, input file for the pw.x calculations and you see this atomic positions are in crystal coordinate so it is very nicely converted this um, file type this uh, iBrav is 4 so basically it has selected the hexagonal uh, Brahe's lattice and uh, on top of this you find some commented outlines with this uh, exclamation mark and these are uh, showing uh, uh, how the structure was generated, uh, the version, timestamp and all these things, the kind of symmetry space group you are using, the cell parameters, alpha, beta, gamma, the angles and uh, it has correctly detected the lattice type to be hexagonal and accordingly it has written down because you had the flag uh, i uh, in the input turned on. So uh, let us just take a look at this structure. Uh, by layer dot in this is our structure and uh, how can we visualize this structure uh, we can have this x crystal open structure and pwsf input file I go to the folder I click on this link do not reduce dimensionality and I have this structure. Now uh, sometimes you will see that uh, you had only uh, four atoms and it is uh, in the original uh, input and it is showing a larger number of atoms basically it is showing the equivalent atoms at the uh, symmetry points of this uh, unit cell so all the equivalent atoms it is also showing so what you can do uh, if you don't like this kind of a view you go to the display menu, go to the unit of repetition and from this unit cell to go for translational asymmetric and you see the, uh, this is this was basically your input in the uh, CIF file so you have the same structure you can just take a look at it uh, this was the CIF file in Avogadro and this is the file uh, that has been created in the dot in format so uh, we have the correct file so that is uh, something you just always need to verify that you have the correct output structure as well because when you do a conversion sometimes something might go wrong you might input something uh, by mistake and you can get a wrong structure so it, uh, you don't want espresso to calculate the uh, defect reef or wrong structure now uh, very interestingly as I showed you, 
I have copied those uh, files already. Uh, so uh, you have this bylayer dot in. This is what the software uh, spits out, and uh, I would want to uh, have a much more much more uh, controlled uh, input file where I can uh, choose the flags uh, the set the values of the flags to my liking so what I do is basically um, I have uh, created this file just by modifying the flags I have deleted these uh, sections changed some of the values of the flags in the different blocks in the control blocks uh, system block and all the different places for example I am using a PBE input DFT vendor walls correction DFT D3 instead of what it is giving out in the default so you have the freedom always when you are using the uh, using this uh, kind of uh, coding uh, you are you are writing your own uh, input file you are modifying the input file uh, for uh, uh, to your own liking and you can change also the pseudo potential file that you are going to use so I have done that as well uh, this is the pseudo potential file I will be using and there are uh, several flags I can uh, keep or delete from this input file that the CIF to QE uh, utility was giving me uh, for example vendor walls correction it, uh, it is a new flag uh, it was giving this uh, XDM type but now I want to use the DFT D3 so I have set it to this and these uh, A1 and A2 parameters for uh, are needed only for this kind of vendor walls correction because it's a bilayer, we will need to have some kind of vendor walls correction and uh, I have used this DFT D3 input DFT is uh, PBE so always make sure you have PBE turned on if you are using uh, this Grime D3 or DFT D3 these calculations or DFT D2 for the matter so I will run this calculation but before that uh, this is my original file right so this is the file I have converted and uh, because it's a perfect structure uh, I will uh, create an imperfection on this so what I can do I can just uh, shift position of a certain uh, carbon atom say this is the z coordinate in the fractional value so I can change it to uh, say 0.2 and I will uh, save it save as and I will save it as uh, gr2 uh, relax.in I have already saved it but uh, save, saving it over that again so uh, this is my file so this is a little bit defective right because I have changed the coordinate and how this one looks like uh, we will also uh, have a view let's uh, close the file that was previously open and open the structure pwscf input file we'll go to the folder relax and relax.in okay and uh, again do the same thing to change the view a little bit and we can see that uh, what we have is somewhat different from the perfect structure so I have deliberately created a sort of an imperfection just shifting this uh, atom up you can see in the compared to the original file it is just shifted a little bit up because for optimization uh, you will mostly uh, have an unoptimized structure and then you will try to minimize the uh, forces and stress uh, on that structure and uh, to get your correct output structure uh, that you will be using for SCF calculations 
So uh, the way to calculate is pretty simple. Uh, you see these flags, I already have all this uh, set up, the relax, so it will do the relaxation. It will not do the VC relax, uh, which is variable cell. I am not going to vary the cell parameters because uh, I am happy with the cell parameters as they are. I, I have not tinkered with them also. And uh, uh, I have just uh, put in the atomic position relaxation, so this is the uh, relax flag. And with that we will do the calculation. So same, same uh, input and the input uh, file name is gr.relax not the original but uh, gr2.relax.in this is what I am going to do and uh, I can put the output here also Let's give it a different name. And the calculation uh, is running right now. So what we do, uh, what the calculation uh, will do is, it will uh, compute the SCF calculation, it will do a self-consistent calculation and uh, then uh, calculate the forces on all of these uh, atoms involved and try to move the atom according to our convergence criteria uh, for the force convergence and stress convergence um, uh, like I have here the force convergence, convergence threshold so uh, point, uh, 001 uh, so this is uh, the flag I have so this uh, I have said the force convergence threshold and it will try to converge the calculation to that amount of force and uh, it will move the atoms in each uh, after each uh, SCF iteration and once it has reached the conver uh, convergence required uh, for the minimum uh, force on um, minimum total force uh, force acting on atoms uh, it will uh, give us the final coordinates like here like uh, we see that uh, the this calculation has converged in uh, four hcf cycles and three bfgs steps so bfgs is the uh, algorithm are named after broyden fletcher goldfrab and uh, shano and uh, this uh, actually uh, this algorithm uh, gives us the energy optimization there are other uh, options available as well so uh, under this subroutine stress you get uh, the force on each components in Rydberg per Bohr cube it gives the total force on each atom or as well as the total force uh, in the unit of uh, this total stress, total force uh, is in Rydberg uh, per atomic unit. So all these things uh, you can get from the output file and finally you have a converged structure and how that uh, structure looks like we can see this was our output relax 2 dot out so that I can also view from X Den. I will uh, again close this file that was open previously and open PWSCF output file this time. I'll go to relax and relax to this is my output. I don't want to reduce dimensionality and I can do uh, several options are there display initial coordinates display optimized coordinates or all coordinates as an animation let's go for that so this was my initial coordinates if you remember uh, I will make the view a little more simple so this was my initial coordinates and I can use this play button
I can go stepwise. So it happened in uh, three or four BSG steps and I can just uh, go right back to the first. Four steps are there. So I can go to the second step, third step, fourth step and there is not much change after that. So this is the final uh, step. I can also create a animation file in AVI or MPEG format or animated GIF format. So there are a lot of options. Uh, this was a very uh, simple calculation for optimization and I hope you like this uh, tutorial and uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel, keep supporting the channel, uh, press the bell icon and uh, see you again. Bye bye.